We're looking at a parametrics question. I put it on the screen. I realize that it's a bit hard to see. Um, they're really, I'm going to do two questions, but really one is just a subset of the other. So here's the question I'm looking at. Uh, number two, prove that the tangent at any arbitrary point P on the parabola is equally inclined to the axis of the parabola and the focal chord through P. Yowza. Okay, now, um, I'm just going to say up front, I'm going to do question three as well. Question three looks terrible. Like you just get overwhelmed by the number of words, right? As it happens, once you do two, three pops out. You just do one, a single construction, and then it just, whoop, it just pops out. So I'm going to do three for the two for the value of one, okay? Uh, three actually is, is much easier than you think once you sift through the language, okay? Two is where, where the business end is, okay? Now, if you did not attempt this question, <coughs> then, um, then go ahead and attempt it, maybe later, okay? Uh, and give it a real shot and then come back and watch if you're running up against the brick wall. If you have given it a shot, but are having trouble with it, then I highly recommend that you pay attention, okay? So this really depends on how you're feeling with your parametrics, whether you want to watch, uh, or whether you want to just keep on going with your critical values, okay? So, just so I can get a rough idea and know who to make eye contact with, who's gonna try and pay attention to this parametrics question? Yeah? Most of you, all right, hands down. You'll need a parabola. You'll need a parabola because um, the lion's share of our thought here is gonna be geometric thought, uh, as parametrics often is. <clears throat> and we're going to do a lot of work just to understand what is going on and then I'm going to not really give you like the form, most of the formal working how to do this. I will give you some, okay? But the key thing I think is do you understand the shape of what's happening and how to logic your way through it, okay? So, step by step. Prove that the tangent at any arbitrary point P on the parabola, stop. So, I have a parabola, right? <clears throat> You'll notice they say um, the parabola. The parabola. Generally speaking, if you get a question like this, um, a well-behaved question will just say to you, the parabola, x squared equals 4ay. In this context, having not been told that, I'm in, I'm in parametric world, it's not an unfair um, conclusion to draw. If it were a sideways parabola, I'd just swap everything with the x's and y's. If I was translated some way, you know, I'd just translate all of the coordinates. So long as my geometric arguments don't depend on that, I'll be fine. So I'm just going to consider it x squared equals 4ay. An arbitrary point, anywhere you like on here, right? So I'm going to place mine uh, somewhere about there. There's my point P, and I need a para uh, not a parabola. I need a tangent through that point. Okay, so you um, grab your ruler. There is my tangent at any arbitrary point P, okay? So far, so good. What are we actually trying to prove? It has something to do with angles. What's the key word that tells me, that clues me into the fact that it's about angles? It's an uncommon word. It's the word inclined, right? Equally inclined. That takes a bit of thinking, right? But the only other place that we know where we see this word is angles of inclination, right? Now, angles of inclination are very specific. Uh, if you've got a person, and they're, that's a terrible person, and they're looking at a, um, they're looking at a flag, right? The angle of inclination is, okay, I'm looking up, and I measure from the horizontal, okay? That's the, that's the context we're used to using this in, right? So you've got some kind of important line, and then you measure, well, what's the angle up to some object, okay? So they've given us all of the objects that we need. You've got the tangent. And we want it to be equally inclined to, number one, the axis of the parabola. Conveniently, I already have the axis of my parabola drawn in. Where is it? The axis of the parabola for this parabola is the y-axis. Are you okay with that? So here comes the tangent, and it hits the axis here. So this is the angle that tells me how inclined I am how the tangent is inclined to the axis. Does that make sense? Okay. So there's the axis, and that is how much the tangent is inclined to the axis. So far, so good? Okay. What's the other thing I'm inclined to? From the tangent, again, to the focal chord through P. 
Okay, so here's P. Uh, just approximately, I would guess that the P and then U would be some the focal point is somewhere like there. Let's call that S. Okay, S for focus. And I have a single chord that passes through P and also passes through the focus. So there's my focal chord. Okay. Now, where is the angle that tells me how the tangent is inclined to that focal chord? Where is it? Now, be careful, right? Uh, here is the tangent inclined to the axis, right? So the tangent inclined to the focal chord looks to me like this angle. <coughs> Do you agree with that? Focal chord, tangent. One of the advantages of me having done this, um, this diagram, like it's nowhere near to scale, but it's to scale enough that I'm like, look, it's an acute angle. Where else is the only other acute angle? Like, I mean, the other option is this guy over here. It's clearly not that angle. It doesn't make sense on my, um, in my geometry. Okay? So I'm trying to prove that. I mean, I marked them in as equal, which is a bit naughty, right? That's what I'm trying to prove. So the question is, well, what tools do I have at my disposal? I want to show that that's equal to that. Now, just don't shout out an answer if you see it immediately, okay? You need to think about, well, what tools do I have to say, work out, say, this angle here, okay? Off of there. Well, I know from my, um, I know from my m equals 10 theta, just doing normal, like, gradient, I can work out that angle based on this gradient and the gradient of this line, which is not too hard to work out. I could work out that angle, which means I could work out this angle. That would be okay, right? Those are going to be related to each other. How are they related, by the way? How are they related? They this guy and this guy. <coughs> they are complementary. Do you see why they're complementary? Just let me quickly show you why. I've got vertically opposite here, right there. There's the y, sorry, there's the x-axis, there's the y-axis, so I have a right angle in here. So I have a right angle, this angle, and this angle. These two have to add to 90. Are you okay with that? So I could use m equal to 10 to find, find that, and then take the complement. That'll give me that angle. But then I have to do this angle somehow, right? I have to calculate what it is. And I don't really have, like, I mean, gross. I'm off at an angle. That's kind of the problem, right? The reason why the axis is the easy angle to work is because um, it's vertical. So that, that's why you get complementary stuff. But here, I've got this at an angle, and I have this at an angle. Gross. Like, even if you find out what this angle is, you then have to find out what this comes down to the axis, what that angle is. Then you have to subtract them. You're going to get 10 inverse of that, 10 inverse of that. It's going to be a disaster. Okay? I reject that as a pathway to go through this question. What else could I do? Has anyone seen something yet? Say that again. Okay, so when you look, right, I uh, try to avoid it by going all the way to the focal point. But do you see the two angles I'm interested in? They reside in a single triangle, right? Do you see that? Like that, that line there, if you don't see it immediately, it's like, whoa, how do I put it in? But now that it's there, you can't unsee it, okay? Now, if it's true that those are the case, I should be able to prove through, through some other means that this side and this side are equal. I should be able to, right? Like, the question is telling me the angles are equal. So therefore, they're telling me this is an isosceles triangle. Are you okay with that? Like, I don't actually know this yet. I've, I've proved it. But I'm trying, to, I'm trying to map out how could I do this, okay? Now, distances. Distances I can do, okay? Because think about this, right? This triangle is very well defined. I know where everything in this triangle is. Let's start with the easy stuff. What are the coordinates of P? 2AP, AP squared. Easy. S. Even easier. What's the definition of S? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,A. Now, this point down here, it's a little bit harder to work out, but not that much. Um, you'll remember that the equations for um, all of the um, different lines in our parametric thing, you can't assume them, okay? But let's just quickly work out. To find here, I, I obviously it depends on this tangent, right? So let's just quickly rehearse how do you prove the equation of a tangent, okay? You know the point it passes through. By definition, you do know it's gradient. So I'm going to write, what, what form am I going to use? Point gradient form, right? So here's my tangent at P, tangent, okay? I'm going to go Y minus Y1, which is AP squared, 
equals m, the gradient, which is p by definition, outside of x minus x1, which is 2ap. Okay, this is easy. We've done this a hundred times, right? This is y minus ap squared. There's px minus 2ap squared. Like you see, people are like, oh, you don't get to, you don't get to memorize, and that's a bit of a pain. But like, it's it's there. It's very easy to work out. You add to both sides, and that gives you that. And you're like, oh yeah, that's the thing I was expecting. So far, so good. How do I use that to find this? Well, it's in mx plus p form. Isn't mx plus p form so awesome, right? You just read off minus ap squared. That's the intercept down there. 